Hello everyone, welcome to our design day video. We are group 19042, automated taquito rolling machine, working with Rolly's Mexican Patio. Our design team consists of our engineering manager, Karen, our two industrial engineers, Mendy and Faisal, our electrical engineer, Nicole, and our two mechanical engineers, David and Bassam. Our agenda includes introducing our project, describing our materials and methods, explaining our results, describing our graphics, and our final conclusions. Rolly's Mexican Patio is a local Mexican restaurant in Tucson, Arizona, owned by our sponsor, Mateo Otero. Their current method of operation consists of designating one employee to hand roll 300 taquitos for a time frame of approximately four hours. The automated taquito rolling machine has the power to fully roll 300 taquitos in just one hour. The overarching goals of the automated taquito rolling machine are to automate the taquito rolling process, maximize employee productivity during working hours, and increase productivity by 25%. The ATRM is broken down into the following subsystems. We have the load cell, linear track, suction mechanism, oil vat, containers such as the paste and stuffing, um, as well as conveyors, a rolling assembly, and the electronics. Um, the two stepper motors, um, one is used for the stuffing dispenser and the other is used for the paste dispenser. We decided to use stepper motors in this situation in order to control the amount of substance we dispense based on the amount of rotations. We have two DC motors, one is for the suction mechanism and the other DC motor is for the linear track. The linear track originally came with a stepper motor, but we decided to switch it out for a DC motor so that it operated at a faster speed. The rolling assembly consists of two pizza rollers that will tuck the contents of the taquito into the, into the tortilla, as well as the top conveyor that rolls and presses the taquito before it is put into the final container. And we have two heating coils, one is for the load cell and one is for the oil container. Our machine consists of two conveyor belts, a bottom and a top one. The bottom conveyor operates at a speed of roughly 3 inches per second. This speed can fulfill the requirement of 300 taquitos per hour, so long as the user is placing each tortilla roughly 8 seconds apart. The top conveyor belt operates at a speed of about 21 inches per second. As for our stuffing container, this was custom made so that the stuffing flows down towards the auger as it gets dispensed and the auger is attached to one of the stepper motors as David has mentioned earlier. As for our paste container, it also has a stepper motor attached to a pump which dispenses the liquid onto the tortilla. Last but not least, we have our load cell which is broken down into other components such as the springs which push the stack of tortillas upward once one tortilla is picked up by our suction mechanism. It also has a heating coil to keep the tortillas heated, as well as an inner and outer wall in order to contain the heat. Two aspects to the project that required software. One being the linear track and suction mechanisms, and the other would be the dispensing assembly. We utilized an Arduino and this was coded in C++. For the linear track, we have two DC motors running. Both motors run clockwise. One moving the linear track forward and the other runs the suction motor in order for it to lift the tortilla. After 8 seconds, the suction motor stops so the tortilla can drop and the linear track motor runs counterclockwise to return it to its original position. The dispensing assembly also uses two motors but with steppers. One for the paste and the other for the stuffing. Initially, the stepper for the paste will run in order for the pump to push the paste further along the tube. And then following that, whenever the infrared sensor detects a, tor a tortilla along the conveyor belt, both stepper mo motors will run um, at approximately 200 steps per second. For our results, we show here in figure B our current progress on our physical prototype. We are currently missing our linear track, which is still in progress. And figure C shows our system requirement verification progress, which shows all 55 requirements and 10 of them have not been met yet but will be met by our um, final acceptance testing um, scheduled for May 2nd. Our point design architecture can be seen on the top right hand corner where we illustrate our, the sub-assemblies of our machine, which consists of the load cell where all the tortillas will be stacked, the suction mechanism where one tortilla will be picked up, 
and the linear track will move it horizontally and drop it onto our oil tub. From there, it'll move on to our bottom conveyor belt. And once the tortilla is sensed from our sensor, the stuffing and paste containers will dispense the ingredients simultaneously. Then we have our custom slope surface, which will give the tortilla its initial tuck before the top conveyor belt fully rolls the tortilla securely into a storage container. Here is a graphic of the electrical dispensing components. We have an EK1254 infrared sensor, and it will be placed at a distance of 5 centimeters away from the tortilla along the conveyor belt, thus starting the two NEMA 17 steppers. Um, the output from the sensor is not able to drive the motor by itself, so the two motor drivers, the A4988, will allow us to drive two motors simultaneously. For our conclusion, we are currently working on verifying our last 10 requirements and we do have our prototype scheduled to be delivered by May 5th with our sponsor. Our final acceptance test, as mentioned previously, will be conducted on May 2nd via FaceTime with our sponsor. Now we will go ahead and share all of our team learnings and challenges throughout the semester. This project came with its fair share of challenges. The main one being as a result of the COVID virus, which made it difficult to find a manufacturer for parts. Our team decided to take things into our own hands to try and get the machine built by putting the parts together ourselves, even though we are not professional metal workers. I found this course to be extremely beneficial to my development as an engineer. I will say that a realization set in with this course, everything up until now has dealt with physics, math, design, but all on paper. With this experience, my group and I were able to combine the knowledge we have to try and make something, more specifically, an automatic taquito rolling machine. I myself underestimated all the time, effort, and thought that goes into an engineering project, no matter how simple it may seem. But I will take the principles I learned from this course and carry it into my future career. What I've learned from this project would be real-life applications to microprocessors, as well as the importance of current limiting things in order for long-time electrical usage. My biggest learnings throughout this project have been learning the importance of risk management and mitigation backup plans, as well as learning to integrate different engineering disciplines while successfully managing project timelines and deadlines. One of the important things that I learned in this class is how to break complex projects into smaller tasks. Also, how to plan and manage time. Hi, this is Mandy, the purchase lead. Beyond this thing, purchase and budget, I also learned how to compose clear and concise engineering document by writing the business case and the operational menu for this project. Throughout the course of this project, I've learned the importance of meeting project requirements, how to assemble parts with optimal precision as well as stability, and most importantly, decision making on what is essential versus what is desired. Last but not least, time is always of essence.